three mighty lords all glorious all powerful all vying for control of the citadel but that raises a question which one is best and to answer that question, well, I asked you guys, and over 15,000 of you cast your vote. I'll also be telling you my own thoughts on the subject, but before we get to that, the three lords. They're very special, right? They're very good. It's been a long time since we've had such a succinct group of monsters that are all connected, yet so different, vibrant, and awesome in their own rights. The Fated Four spring to mind as a perfect example. Glavinus got the main flagship focus, but the other three are there in their own right, just as Malzano got the main flagship focus, but Lunagron and Garagom are certainly almost as important and impactful as you go through the game, and I think it's really, really cool to kind of get that, as I said, Fated Four-esque experience in miniature once more. In any case, then, well, this was a tough one. I think all three monsters are at minimum 10 out of 10 examples of both a wonderful aesthetic design, a wonderful biological design, and a wonderful fight design. Separating them is difficult. But if forced to, if bowgun to my head, well, here we go. In third place for me is... Lunagaron have an organ that chills the air they inhale, circulating it throughout their body in a unique form of thermoregulation. They can travel long distances and endure environmental changes, allowing them to occupy a wide range of habitats. They usually walk on all fours, but can stand on two legs by shutting down their cooling mechanism, spiking their body temp to expand their muscles. Oh, yes indeed. Lunagaron is my third place, and I think it's simply because ice monsters in general tend to not really do it for me, and blue kind of tealy colouring as a main palette choice also tend to not do it for me. But at the same time, Armored two leg standing ice werewolf. I mean, a wonderful. Does I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm really sorry. But yes, he is a mighty specimen. The swish of his claws, the sound design. Ah, oh, it is downright pleasurable to listen to. And of course, monsters gaining an extra battle suit of armor in any form is really special and badass. The fact that he is so fast yet not punishingly so, still having a good decent bit of bulk and power behind him, a ice jet tail, and the fact that he, yes, is an ice monster, but he doesn't constantly blast off ice or throw ice around. He's very much a physical monster that just happens to be coated in ice, and that's really quite cool. I love monsters that are very elementally inclined, but they use their element physically as opposed to how you traditionally might imagine. And yes, he has a few ice breaths and such, but that's just kind of nice to round out his moveset. For the most part, he just wants to stab and slash you, and I am all for that. And then a double level of I'm getting serious. In fact, you could argue it's triple. He gets ice armored, he stands on two legs, and he goes red veins poppy out mode. It's very Rajang-esque, and that already gives him a very special place. And look, as I said, all of these monsters are 10 out of 10. Separating them is hard, but even if it comes down to something as maybe petty as I just prefer the other two's color schemes, that might be it. Lunagaron is fantastic, but he is third. In second place, then, a monster characterized by its massive and rigid body. Garangom are generally placid, living in regions with fertile soil. Their sap-like fluids can promote plant growth, forging a symbiotic relationship with flora that grows in their bodies. They can also use that sap to harden plants or the surrounding soil, outfitting their bodies and enhancing their attacks. Garangom! And look, even just that little mention, right, 
of a symbiotic relationship with flora that grows in their bodies. Garen Gome, on top of having the greeny moss, which is apparent, has a few little purpley flowers literally growing out of him. Which not only is a fantastic representation of his ecology, it's such like a delicate touch for such a mighty, powerful, raging beast when he is provoked. Also known as the Rigid Cloak Beast, the Wandering Colossus, he really is something to behold. Getting a full-on gorilla to Rajang's monkey, and obviously Rajang has gorilla-esque connotations, but Garen Gohm is proper gorilla. And also that mix of Frankenstein and course traditional golems he really has a lot going for him i even kind of like that half of him his skin instead of the kind of wyvern plate scale that a lot of monsters get. Though that tends to be a symptom of being a fanged beast, and hey, just being a fanged beast is great. I love fanged beast as a category, it's one of my favourite, and getting a new powerhouse member, or at least tied second with Gosharag and, uh, of course, Gameth, if we ignore variations and subspecies and all of that, is really, really cool. It's a category that I always think should grow, because it's nice to have the big scary mammal monsters and Garangome is a fine member of that. Not to mention double element shenanigans is always fun, especially when they're opposing, but that only works if they use it well. And the idea that he plunges his fist in the ground, using the sap that he secretes to glue mossy, soaked dirt to one arm and volcanic rock to the other, and then combine them for both flaming and sogging, let's go with, punches, or connecting them together for sudden steam burst of scalding death and then when he gets truly mad a monster that gets genuinely more powerful the lower it gets when you activate face half and half mode and he just slams his noggin into the ground for a steam explosion his ultimate attack is a spectacle even if it's not too threatening he really does have a lot going for him and is an incredibly creative design with how he really pieces himself together Frankenstein's monster-esque with uh, that lava and moss and yeah, I just, he's, he's just magic, he really is. Which of course, by process of elimination, leaves in number one. A dragon covered with elegant silver scales, it uses the curio to drain the life energy of other living creatures, creeping around at night and attacking its prey from behind. It appears almost regal to start with, but after draining enough energy, it can turn a violent, fresh blood crimson. This form is known as the bloodening, and is widely feared. Malzeno! Hello! Of course! The Bloodening. I mean, any monster that has the Bloodening as a mode is a monster that is magnificent, but a new Elder Dragon, a new flagship, his colour scheme both in and out of the Bloodening is perfect, and just as Lunagaron's colour scheme is a bit, ah, to me, this one is the opposite. I'm biased towards it. Red and black is just peak, and I love the whole way that vampires have been brought through to him. You have the regal Dracula look, but you also have the savage kind of beastly vampire mythos too, and there really isn't much that goes wrong here. The way he uses the curious, fantastic, the teleport and the sound it makes is Ah, oh, you know, I, you know what, you know, you know, you do know, it's, ah, oh, it is ridiculously cool. His grab doing a proper vampire bite, his significance to the story, his rivalry with Guy's Magorm, he really is wonderful. And also, as a great sword main, he is in the top three most satisfying monsters to fight because he's such a good matchup with strong arm stance and he's beyond satisfying to hunt. From his lore, his ecology, his story, his aesthetic, his fight, every single part of him is magnificent and he is at minimum a firm new member of my top 10 monsters and might even be pushing for that top 5. The Silver Duke Dragon, the Embodiment of Darkness, the Scarlet Feast, all titles he bears and oh, he bears them well. And he definitely does because this is what you guys thought. Yeah! Kind of a slam dunk for Malzano here, and a shredding defeat for poor, poor Garangome. I am kind of very surprised at this, but then I'm also kind of not. It's the order you face them, so they ramp up. Kind of makes sense that would be the spread. Malzano armor is a big deal, which gives him points, and... 
Ah, it's very, very interesting. Over 15,000 votes, and this is how it breaks down. I am very, very curious what you guys think of this result, but clearly, at least roughly half of all Sunbreak Hunters are Team Vampire over Frankenstein's Monster and werewolves, so that's very interesting to see. For now though then, I thought it would be fun to have our lords battle before the first title update takes the focus just that bit away from them. And well, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.